So in 7 1 part 2, we're going to talk about some formulas that use radians and how that can be helpful in uh, kind of geometry applications. So if we want to calculate the uh, arc length of a circle, um, we could use the formula s equals r theta that I mentioned before. Remember, theta has to be in radians for this to work. If it's in degrees, remember, if we take degrees and we multiply by pi and divide by 180, we get radians. So if it isn't in radian to a measure, you could um, use that conversion at any time to change uh, radi or degrees into radians. So uh, S is our arc length, R is our radius, and theta is our radians. If it isn't in radians, use this conversion. So let's use this, uh, the formula, to find the arc length of a circle with a radius 10 and angle 215. So our S is R theta. We know R is 10. We know theta has to be converted. So we're going to tack on a pi and put it over 180 to make sure it's in radians. And we can reduce it now or we can reduce it later. I, I'm going to reduce it later. The arc length would be 10 times 215 pi over 180. Now, since this is an actual length, let's go to the nearest tenth, and we're going to actually use the pi button on our calculators to be more accurate. And so if we do 10 times 215 times pi divided by 180, that's approximately 37.5 units. Now, if they actually give you the units, um, please make sure that you, uh, um, you know, put them on there. They haven't given us the units. Uh, if we were to draw this, we could label this as 10. 215, here's 90. Here's 180. Here's 270. So 215 um, is... After um, 180, 35 more, so it's about right here. So this would be our angle, 215. And then the arc length we just found, if we were to take a string and measure from here to here, that's the S that they're talking about. And it would be about 37.5 units, whatever those units would be. Now, to find the area of a sector, uh, there is a formula, again, using radians. It's area equals 1 half theta r squared. Area equals 1 half theta r squared. So area, or A, is the area of the sector, that uh, almost triangular wedge. Uh, theta, again, has to be in radians, and R is our radius. So this can be very useful um, when we're just, you know, dealing with some type of thing that is a uh, shape that is a portion of a circle. So here, if we have a sprinkler, that can sprinkle out a, a distance of 20 feet. And if it rotates 30 degrees, what is the area of the sector of grass that the sprinkler waters? So let's think about what we know. The area formula for a sector is 1 half uh, r squared theta. 
So let's think about from the picture what we know. We know r is 20 feet. We know theta currently is not in radians, so tack on a pi and put it over 180. And then let's put it into the formula. So this is going to be 1 half, 20 squared, times 30 pi over 180. Now our units are in feet, so square units would be square feet. So if you do a half times 20 squared times 30 times pi, just use that pi button, divided by 180. Now you can reduce this or just leave it like that when it's in degrees and we get that it's 104.7 square feet. Okay, so that's how you could use it, that formula, to find the area that the water covers. Some other applications are angular and um, linear speed. Angular speed is given by that formula you see there. Now this W here, it's not really a W, but it's also a Greek letter. And the way that I draw it is I tend to kind of draw it, um, you know, how would you describe it? Like I, I tend to make a W that's very rounded, if that helps point you in the right direction. And that is an omega symbol. So omega is radians per unit of time would be an angular speed. I have gone through this many radians per unit of time. So if you see that little w, that's omega. Linear speed is I have traveled uh, this many feet per second, this many miles per hour. Um, so where S is that arc length, because it's a length that you would measure with a tape measure or a piece of string or something over a unit of time. And But the interesting one that I find is interesting is if you take the radius times the angular speed, so if you go R times theta over time, you get velocity or linear speed as well. So um, these are just some formulas that are going to be helpful for you to know. So if um, uh, you write those down, then I'll show you how to use them. So omega is angular speed, how many radians I've traveled per unit of time. Linear speed would have to be if I took and measured, like maybe I was on a carousel and my horse is right here and I wanted to know how many miles per hour my horse is going, how many feet per second my horse is going. So let's look at this next example. So it says a water wheel is shown, completes one rotation every five seconds. Find the angular speed in radians per second. Well, angular speed is that omega is the radians per unit of time. Well, um, one rotation is 360 degrees which is two pi radians. We learned that in the first video. And so uh, one rotation every five seconds would be two pi every five seconds. So two pi radians per second. And it's as easy as that when they give us that much information. So that's our answer right there. So that one's a nice one to do. Now, let's find one where we have a little bit more thinking to do. It says here that a bike has um, a wheel that is 28 inches in diameter. So let's kind of draw a little picture here. So the radius of a tire is 14 inches. We don't use diameter a whole heck of a lot, okay? 
Now, it says we go 180 revolutions per minute or rotations per minute. So if we go 180 revolutions per one minute, remember, every revolution is 2 pi worth of radians. So that means that if we take 180 times 2 pi, that's how many radians we've gone every minute. So we've gone 360 pi radians every minute. Well, one of the formulas uh, on the last page, if you go back up, look, uh, on this page, uh, one of the formulas was if we know the angular speed, which is the radians per minute, if you just multiply that by the radius, you will know um, the linear speed. So our linear speed, we can do r times w, omega. Um, so this is omega. So if we just do 14 times omega, 360 pi radians per minute, we will find how many inches we are going every minute. Now, if we multiply all that out, 14 times 360 times pi, that's 15,833.6 inches every minute. Now, if we're riding our bike and someone asks us our speed, we would not say, hey, I just traveled 15,833.6 inches per minute they would say, hey, how many miles per hour were you going? So if you do that conversion, you would find that they were going roughly 15 miles per hour. Just something interesting there. And then your homework, let me go back to it. I'm sorry, it's in Google Classroom. And there is a video that matches it. So here's your homework. And I will send you a link to a video where I do a few of these with you, but it's just the highlighted ones. And I've tried to give you some space where the other ones used to be. So uh, there it is. So good luck. Okay, bye.